Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be comparing Google Chrome compiled for Intel, which will run under Rosetta 2 on a Mac Mini M1 with Google Chrome compiled for Apple Silicon. So I've made a couple other videos on the Mac Mini M1, and I'll put a link in the description of my Apple playlist where you can find those videos. I'll also put a link in the description to the Mac Mini M1 on Amazon, and if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So the Mac you can get on Amazon is the base model. I don't know if they're ever going to sell the higher end models, but the model I'm using does have 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. So I've rebooted this Mac and I've logged into a user account that I don't normally use. So it's a fresh account. It doesn't have plugins and all sorts of stuff in my Google Chrome. And this is Google Chrome 87.0.4280.88. And it says here x86.64 translated. There's some kind of a script error here. I don't know what that is. So as of right now, you can download a separate version of Google Chrome that runs on Apple Silicon. I don't know if they're ever going to make this so it actually updates to run on both. Right now they have two different branches. They have the one that runs on Intel and then the one that runs on Apple Silicon. And I think that version might also run on Intel. So I'm going to be doing a couple different benchmarks and I'll speed up the video through these, but I'm going to go to Browser Bench and I'll run these three benchmarks and then I'm going to install the new version of Google Chrome and I'll run these again. So I don't have anything else open on my computer. I'll go to full screen and I'll click on Jetstream 2. Okay, we got 93.208. Next, I'll run the motion mark. Okay, so we got 261.91. Next, I'll run speedometer. Okay, so I got 116 on that test. So now I want to download the latest version of Chrome. So I'll just search for Google Chrome. I'll click on download now. I'll click on download Chrome. And here it's giving us a choice, Mac with Intel chip or Mac with Apple chip. So we're currently running the Mac with Intel chip version under Rosetta 2, and I'm guessing both of these versions would run on either system, because I think the Mac with Apple chip version probably also would run on Intel if it's universal, but I haven't tried that. So I'll click on Mac with Apple chip. So it's downloading now. Now there could be bugs in this or incompatibilities that are unforeseen, so you need to be careful if you download this if you have critical work that you're doing with your browser. You could probably always erase it and go back to the previous version. Okay, so that's downloaded. I'll go down to my dock here and I'll quit Chrome. I'll open up the installer. I'll drag Chrome into the applications folder. It's asking if I want to replace the older version. I'll say replace. I'll type in my password and now it's installing. Wow, that's pretty fast. I'll go down to my dock. I should be able to use the same icon I had before. It should open the new version. I'll say open. Now we'll be able to tell that we have the latest version. If I go down to my applications, and I have applications in the dock, I drug the application folder down here. And then if I go to utilities and activity monitor, and I'll look for CPU, I'll sort by process name. And we want to scroll down to Google, Chrome, and that would be here. And you can see in the architecture column, it says Apple next to all these Google Chrome lines. So here's Google Chrome itself says Apple. Another way that we could check would be going to our Apple menu about this Mac, system report, applications, we're sorted by application name. I'll go down to Google Chrome, and it says it's universal. If it was Intel, it would just say Intel. Universal means it runs on both systems natively. Okay, so I'll run my tests again. Start with Jetstream. Okay, so we got 162.605. I'm going to run all the tests and then I'll look at the scores all together. Go to motion mark. Okay. 
Okay, we got 7, 12, 59. Now we'll run speedometer. Okay, we got 207. So let's take a look at all of the numbers. Okay, so here are all the numbers. I have one row per benchmark, and then I have Intel and Apple Silicon in columns, and then I have the speed up factor. So I just took Apple Silicon divided by Intel to get this number. So on Jetstream, we got 93. On Intel, we got 162 on Apple Silicon, and it was a 1.75 speed up. So it's about one and three quarters times faster. That's assuming these numbers actually mean speed. I'm not completely sure how this works out, but it was one and three quarters times better, I guess. So for motion mark, we got 261. On Intel, we got 712 on Apple Silicon, and the speed up was 2.72. So this benchmark was quite a bit faster on Apple Silicon than it was on Intel. And then for speedometer, we got 116 on Intel and 207 on Apple Silicon, and the speed up was 1.78. So interestingly, the Jetstream and the speedometer one showed similar speed increases on Apple Silicon, and the motion mark was quite a bit faster. So those are some nice speed increases you get with using Apple Silicon native apps on this computer. That being said, I'm surprised how well it runs under Intel. I've been using it for a couple weeks now, and it works fine. There haven't been times when I've seen it really laggy, and I don't play games and stuff in the browser, though. I'm just using websites, but a lot of websites can really tax a browser these days anyway. So I don't know that I mentioned earlier, this is my first time running the new version of Chrome. I'm now going to switch over to it and try it out. It'll be interesting to see if I notice any speed increase there. Another thing to consider is that if you're on a portable computer, I'm on a Mac Mini M1, but if you're on one of the MacBooks, you could potentially get better battery life by running the Apple Silicon version over the Intel version. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.